Let's cover energy prices right now as well, because that's been a huge part of the story. Brian Sullivan's here, and he's been tracking this really closely. He's got a, a great look for us right now at a lot of the catalyst for why this is happening. Hey, Brian. Yeah, and Becky, good morning. How much time do you have? I mean, uh, <laughs> what's not the catalyst? I mean, in the United States, obviously, we've got boosting demand. We've got reduced supply in some cases. Oil production has not gone up the level that demand has gone up. I mean, if you look at traffic statistics in many cities, we are seeing traffic now above even pre-pandemic levels. Nobody's taking mass transit. Everybody's driving. And so we are seeing gasoline demand on the rise. Well, not credit records, but still up. But a bigger story around the world. And I think that, again, and we're not, you know, sort of harping on this too much because you can't harp on it too much. Let's talk about Europe. In Europe, they are seeing natural gas prices, in some cases, 25 or 30 U.S. dollars equivalent. Our natural gas prices, you could see there, we're down a little bit right now. We're at five and a half bucks. So why are we at five and a half bucks and Europe at 25 or 30, with China, by the way, paying over 30 for liquefied natural gas? Well, it's a result of a couple of things. Number one, they didn't buy a lot of storage during the pandemic. Maybe it's because they underestimated the boom in demand coming out of the pandemic. Maybe they thought the pandemic might go on and lockdowns would go on longer. So they were short on storage already, guys. Now, all of a sudden, you're also seeing a shortage of some of the renewables, the wind power in Italy and in the North Sea, just not producing as much. You had a shortage level because they screwed up and didn't buy enough natural gas. Then you don't have enough power coming in. And all of a sudden, you realize, oh, my gosh, are we going to have enough raw materials to power the power plants, we need to start buying. Factor that in with many traders being short natural gas. You've got this huge, all of a sudden boost in demand, short covering margin calls. You probably have some commodity desks that got completely blown out. And now they're paying these outrageous spot rates in the natural gas and even coal markets, guys. And as I showed on Worldwide Exchange, electricity prices, at least right now, and it could be a very short term thing. I wanna be very clear on that at like 300 euro per megawatt hour in Germany. What does that mean? Well, it's normally maybe 30 to, to 50. And if I'm wrong about that, have some of our European viewers tell us. The point is, this has gone from an industrial problem, power plants, manufacturing, et cetera, Becky, to an individual's problem because they're rolling fixed rate contracts are coming off. You're gonna open up your bill if it gets cold and be like, normally my pay 100 euro a month why is my bill 400 euro? It's incredibly inflationary, and it could be a macroeconomic headwind as well. All, by the way, as the climate summit is about to kick off in <laughs> Scotland in a couple of weeks. So there are a few things that, that, that we've been waiting on. One of them, there were there was some calls for Biden to talk about releasing um, oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which it sounded like they were considering yesterday. They also talked about maybe cutting off exports to make sure we keep it all here in the United States. Would that work? No. Why? Not at all. Um, the, S the SPR might bring down prices in the short term, but, I mean, there's not enough oil in the SPR that you could release. It's going to make a, a huge difference. On the export ban, this is really, really interesting <clears throat> because it's something I hadn't thought about. Goldman Sachs out with a note this morning on just that, Becky, and you forgive me because I'm going to read it because, again, I, you know, whatever. An SPR release would bring forward the potential for restricting oil and LNG exports, keeping these hydrocarbons in the U.S. Such an action would bring the additional benefit of reducing the carbon intensity of exports, strengthening the administration's negotiation power out of discussions on the carbon border tax adjustment. Also, they said, ironically, it would be particularly bullish for gasoline and refined products because now we'd have to be a net importer of gas mm. priced off of Brent crude, European crude, which, of course, would go up in price if we stopped exporting. I thought that was really interesting for two reasons. Number one, this export ban may have nothing to do with supply, demand, or prices. According to Goldman Sachs, it may be a negotiation tactic to reduce our carbon intensity to give us a better starting point on these carbon negotiations which are coming up. What? Absolutely fascinating point of view. And if we do it, gas prices, Goldman says, may go up because then we got to import stuff priced off Brent crude, which would go up in price. I don't think any politician, it doesn't matter what your political party or bent is, wants to have Americans paying four, four fifty or five bucks a gallon 
in parts of the country, by the way, where they don't already have that. In some parts of Hawaii and California, they do. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.